Hi everybody. Well, spring is in the air. It's a nice sunny day today and it feels incredible to get outside right now. What's more, we're very lucky here at TFL Off-Road to have yet another test vehicle to show off to you guys. This thing just showed up. This is the 2020 Polaris Ranger 570 and I can't wait to show you guys all the features on it and just how affordable it is. But that's actually coming up in a future video. So if you want to see more specifically on the Ranger, come back to the channel. This video right here is all about break-in periods and the things that you should do when you buy a brand new side-by-side -side or UTV. So this thing is brand spanking new, just arrived straight from the dealership, and I like to be a good uh, vehicular steward, if you will. I'm not going to own this thing for its whole life, someone else is, so I like to do a proper break-in period to make sure that whoever buys this thing gets a good running vehicle. So let's go over the break-in on this Ranger, and then I also did the research on every other major major UTV brand and we'll talk about what the break-in periods are at those brands and how they differ. Let's jump right into it. Let's consult the owner's manual now guys and I mean this is just a general bit of advice but if you buy a brand new machine read the owner's manual get this thing out go through it uh, it's amazing how many features are on machines like this that you need to know about and there's nothing more embarrassing than having other people school you on your own machine so take this inside make it a nighttime read for the first week you have your brand new machine and learn everything about it now let's see what it says about break-in so what exactly are we breaking in on the Ranger? Well, of course, the engine and the brakes. The engine on these models lives back here, so you actually gotta tip up this dump bed, and that gives you access into the engine. Now, the one thing I've noticed about this Ranger right off the bat is just how easily accessible everything is. So there's the top of your engine right there. There's your CVT right here. You could pop that cover off if you had to change out the belt. It's basically the first thing you get to. You can see the battery just right up there in the front. Pretty easy to access from back here. Also from under the seats. Um, so yeah, I gotta say I like that. And just because I'm showing you, let me show you guys what's under this front hood as well. So this also opens up with a couple of rubber straps here. It's a little bit flimsy, this hood, I gotta say, but there it is. And one thing I love about this is, once again, just look how open everything is. You can get right into your radiator, your front differential right down there, all your drive shafts, your suspension right here. Everything is just really out in the open and uh, nice, easy to get to on this Ranger. And like I said, we're breaking in the engine. Also, all the fluids and gears and the differentials and everything, they need time to sort of grind together and find their uh, appropriate space and make sure everything is tight and then of course also the brakes and these are disc brakes at all four wheels all four corners and because this is the premium model we get these upgraded wheels which look pretty nice so definitely got to make sure you break in the brakes as well now let's keep going over what this break-in procedure entails Let's go over what Polaris says. And first, let me say that Polaris actually has quite an extensive amount of information on break-in compared to some of the other brands that only offer a few sentences. So Polaris says the break-in period is the first 20 hours or the first full two tanks of gas. Now the 20 hour number is actually kind of common among brands, but the first two tanks of gas thing, that's a Polaris specific thing for sure. Um, now they're just saying, of course, you know, the break-in is very important. Uh, excessive heat during the first three hours, that's important too. So not other brands have this. Polaris just says the first three hours period, no excessive heat. So you just can't go very fast and you can't run this thing for very long. Now here's all the different steps. A lot of them are just sort of general maintenance, like filling the fuel tank and checking the oil level. But here we go, this is sort of driving techniques. Avoid aggressive use of the brakes. That's a common one A common one among brands. Very throttle positions. Do not operate at sustained idle. Again, common one among brands is you can never run at one throttle position for very long. Pull only light loads, also common among all brands. You don't want to be out there pulling massive heavy trailers during break-in. Uh, regular checks on fluids, that's just smart. Uh, change both the oil and filter at 25 hours or one month. That's interesting. Uh, basically, most brands do call for uh, maintenance at the end of the break-in period. So right when the break-in ends, you should do a few full maintenance. Makes sense that you should be changing up your filters. 
and we turn the page and there's actually a second page so we'll keep going so the brake system it says the first 50 stops only moderate braking force you're never to go very aggressive at the beginning and then you also need to break in the pvt players calls it we all know it as a cvt um, the clutches and the drive belt need to be broken in yeah by doing this you're going to make sure they last longer so slower speeds during the break in period pull only light loads avoid aggressive acceleration and high speed operation um and then if a belt fails, yeah, clean all the debris out. That makes sense. You don't want anything getting sucked up in there. So the information in the Polaris owner's manual is fairly standard across all the brands, you know. Um, just no aggressive driving when you're breaking the machine in. Now, if you need a visual reference, this is what your right foot should not look like. This is how you do it. Gentle acceleration and vary your speeds. The one sort of point of contention or one thing which I think people disagree on when it comes to break-ins is the concept of the hard break-in. And I know this is also a case in automotive. Now, Polaris, in that information, they say, you know, never drive aggressively during your break-in period. But some brands actually recommend short bursts of full throttle. So, you know, just two to three second little burst of full throttle um, and then let off. Now, some engineers believe this will help you. Others obviously don't. I mean, Kawasaki, for example, says do not go over half throttle at all during your break-in period. So this one, I, I can't really help you guys on. Like I said, some brands recommend it, some don't. I would say read your own owner's manual and follow whatever your brand says. Yeah, I would like to assume that those engineers know their engine best, um, but this is definitely one thing that people disagree on. So now let's actually look at those other brands and I will go through the entire list and tell you sort of what are the differences in what they recommend for break-ins. So now let's look at what other brands say about break-in and first we'll talk about Can-Am and this is for specifically the Can-Am Defender. I only looked at utility models because I have a Ranger here. If you buy a sport model just do the research yourself. Look in your own owner's manual because maybe there's different recommendations there. Um, what I'm going to tell you about here are all utility models but these are good general guidelines to follow for any machine. Anyways let's get into it. So Can-Am for the Defender they say the break-in period is 10 hours or 300 kilometers slash 200 miles so Can-Am's kind of break-in range is different than Polaris uh, Can-Am says during the break-in period avoid full throttle avoid pressing the accelerator past three quarters avoid sustained acceleration and avoid prolonged cruising speeds um, however brief accelerations and speed variations contribute to a good break-in so Can-Am's kind of using their wording carefully they don't say go to full throttle they say brief accelerations and speed variations so they're saying that little hits of throttle and then changing up your speed constantly is going to help you with your break-in that's an interesting warning right there um, so for brakes can-am says that um, new brakes will not operate at their maximum efficiency until break-in is completed braking performance may be reduced so please use caution that's all can-am says about brakes they don't say don't brake hard they just say hey at the beginning your brakes aren't going to work 100% yet, so be aware of that. And then when it comes to the belt, Can-Am says the belt requires a 50 kilometer or 30 mile break-in. And then during that break-in period, so the first 30 miles, you want to avoid strong acceleration and deceleration, avoid pulling a load, and avoid high-speed cruising. So again, a whole different number of recommendations there from Can-Am. Now next up we have Yamaha. Yamaha says zero to 20 hours is a full break-in. And this is on the Viking. Now here's what Yamaha says. Prolonged full throttle operation or any condition that might result in excessive heat must be avoided. However, momentary two to three second full throttle operation under load does not harm the engine. Each full throttle acceleration sequence should be followed by a substantial rest period. So Yamaha doesn't say that full throttle is going to help your brake in. All they say is it won't harm the engine. Again, I think they're kind of getting at a, a, a hard brake in without actually specifically coming out and saying it probably for legal reasons. Um, now zero to 20 is a full brake in 
recommend for the Yamaha, but from zero to 10 hours, Yamaha says avoid continuous operation above half throttle and then allow a cool down of five to 10 minutes of after every hour of operation. So for the first zero to 10 hours, after every hour, they want you to stop for five to 10 minutes. That's actually kind of intrusive, but definitely good to know and something to adhere to. Now, Kawasaki, a much shorter bit on break-in. You know, they do not devote nearly as much time to it, but they might have maybe the most clever line. So Kawasaki says the first 20 hours or 200 kilometers of vehicle operation is break-in. During that time, and let me say 20 hours or 200K, during that time, do not exceed half throttle at all. So they just say never go above half throttle. Um, and now here comes the best sentence I think about break-ins. If the vehicle is not used carefully during this period, you may end up with a broken down vehicle instead of a broken in vehicle. <laughs> Thanks for that, Kawasaki. Uh, and then finally, um, we have Honda. And Honda, just like Kawi actually, only devotes just a little two sentence bit to break in in the owner's manual. This is for the Pioneer 1000. Honda says, help assure your Honda side-by-side's -side future reliability and performance by paying extra attention to how you drive during the first operating day or 15 miles of operation. During this period, avoid full throttle starts and rapid acceleration. That's all Honda says about it. That's really interesting, guys. Other brands, um, way longer break-in periods. Honda only says one day or 15 miles, and they don't even go into detail. They just say avoid full throttle and rapid acceleration. So your Honda is broken in the second day you own it, whereas your Kawasaki isn't broken in until 20 hours, and you're not allowed to go over half throttle that whole time. So these periods really do differ by brand, and I said this before, I'll say it again. I think the best way to go about this is read your own owner's manual and do your best to adhere to your brand's specific break-in. A little off topic here, guys, but I also want to show you what all these tags are hanging off the steering wheel. When you buy any new UTV, you're going to have all these things. So let's take a look. First of all, you have this tag right here. This is from the EPA talking about emissions. Just trying to give you a sense for how clean the engine in your vehicle is. So this one is actually... Uh, very fairly clean at like two and a half but you know if you're in the dealership actually shopping you can look at these tags and cross shop based on the emissions now of course you have a safety tag here pretty standard stuff drive responsibly don't drink and drive this is the most interesting one i want to show you guys the tilt table test results. Now, the tilt table, you can read it there, but I'll explain too. It's testing lateral stability. So they're literally telling you at what point is this thing going to roll over when it's tilted. And uh, you can see there, it explains to you the testing procedures. But this number is interesting because you can look at different UTVs tilt table results and then again, compare them. Uh, this is going to tell you just how prone to a rollover one of these vehicles might be. And that's precisely why they're here. UTVs and side-by-sides have been known to be rollover prone, so having this tilt table number kind of gives you a sense for uh, exactly how stable a certain machine will be. And then uh, finally, you have one more safety sticker up here. It goes without saying that if you spend your hard-earned money on a machine like this, you're going to want it to last as long as possible. And the best way to do that is to adhere to the manufacturer's recommendations and make sure you read your owner's manual, check out what that break-in period is, and then do it. If you do, you're gonna guarantee that this machine will run good for many miles or kilometers down the trail. And hey, if it does break, well, at least you know that it wasn't your fault because you broke it in properly. Well, guys, that's it for this video. Let me know what you think. Let me know how you guys broke in your machines. And uh, let me know if you believe in all these different break-in procedures or maybe you don't believe in them. Anyways, let me know in the comments below. While you're down there, hit like, hit subscribe, and then of course, come right back here to the channel for the latest news, views, and real world reviews. See ya.